because we think God is like us. And I believe that by nature, we are procrastinators. Like we think, oh, I'll start the gym tomorrow. Oh, I'll do my diet tomorrow. Oh, I'll, I'll really start reading my Bible and devoting myself and, you know, and spirituality and all, but I'll, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. But God is saying today, behold, I do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Pastor always says, faith is now. So if faith is now, that means that God is now. So I want you to lift your hands. 
let's welcome and acknowledge his presence that is in this room right now because a moment in his presence changes our lives father we thank you we bless your name today thank you that now is the hour of visitation now is the hour of visitation we thank you for giving your son we give you praise for the gift of your son we give you praise that there is power in just the mention of the name of jesus there is power to heal power to save power to deliver power to set free in just the mention of his name because at the sound of that name, every demon has to flee. For to that name, all power is given to set the hopeless captive free. Every sin, every disease, every sickness must bow down to the name of Jesus. So Father God, we give you praise for the name. We give you praise for the name.
in the name of Jesus. There's power in your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. And today, it's here to break every chain.
Mrs. Parsley the other day, and she, she said something, and I said, did you say you want me to pray for you? She said, no. She said, I want to praise, and I said, okay, we'll praise. She goes, no, I want you to praise for me. She said, I want you all to praise for me, so please help me praise for Mrs. Parsley. She needs God to touch her. Feel the presence of the Lord right now. You need to die. you need to like run and dive into the altar. If you can't feel the presence of God right now, if you're still just patty caking and feel like you don't know really what's going on and what's wrong with all these people, if I was you, I'd run and dive headlong into the altar because He is here. I'm gonna try again. I said He. He, he is here now. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. I told the elders this morning, there's a change, there's a shift. There's a move, there's an upgrade. Shout upgrade. Since January, Pastor Tim has been leading a hundred people in prayer, kind of covertly, but it's about to hit overtly. When people pray, everything changes. Now I need you to shout 
if for the last seven days you've been living right. You ain't been shocking, so you ain't lacking. You ain't been stealing, so he's been revealing. I need you to take 30 seconds and praise that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you spent the last seven days living right. Somebody lift up holy hands without wrath, without doubting. Come on, holy hands. You've not been going where you shouldn't go looking at what you shouldn't look at. You've been living a fasted lifestyle. You've been pushing your plate back and lifting your prayers up. I need somebody to get happy and let the devil know you got Holy Ghost power to live right. You've not been using your tongue to gossip. You've not been using your tongue to complain. You've been using your tongue to bless and praise. If that's you, do it now. In fact, I feel like things let off right there. So right now, I want you to apprehend every critical word, every negative word, every complaining word, that was not born of faith, I want you to lift both hands and shout a repentance right now. No, come on and take a little more than that. Get it out of you. Get it out. Get it out of you. Apprehend those words. Tell them they have no power. Bind them. Now. Replace them with the word of God at the top of your lungs. Get to prophesying. Get to, I didn't say pray in tongues. I said prophesy. Prophesy. I said prophesy. Prophesy. Start saying things like, I have the tongue of the learned. I know how to speak a word in season to them that are weary. Now everything you complained about for the last seven days, get to dancing, waving, shouting, running, praising right now. that you didn't fornicate this week. You ought to shout that you didn't look at pornography this week. You ought to shout that you didn't cuss this week. Go ahead and slap somebody a high five right now. Because I'm going to tell you what God wants today. He wants your praise. No, you didn't hear what I said. He wants your praise. You've been complaining. One more time. If you've been living right, get out of your chair 
and go tell five people I lived right because of the Holy Ghost. Go. right shout yes wait a minute now in the last seven days if you've been disciplining your mind to think right as a man thinketh as a man thinketh in his heart, so is it. So if there's something you don't like about your Izzy, you gotta change your stinking thinking. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are holy, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if you're going to have any power, virtue. Think on these things. Lay your hands on your temples and say, mind, mind. You, are you are the mind, the mind of, Christ. of Christ. I'm not finished. Mind, mind. You, you are anxious and nervous about nothing. Wait, wait, wait. And the very peace of my God. Oh, there's an anointing. I feel like I got my hands on your temples right now.
Just when I speak, I feel it going into your mind. The very peace of my God. Say it. The very peace. Say it again. The very is he your God? You have to know he's your God. The very peace of my God keeps, guards, garrisons my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. Now say thoughts obey the word of God. Now let go of your temples and shout that you're thinking right. No, no patty cake shout. Don't opera shout. Shout! You're thinking right about your body. You're thinking right about your mind. You're thinking right about your finances. You're thinking right about your boss. You're thinking right about your finances. You're I prophesy to you in the next 30 days, 30 people will be told by your doctor, you don't need your antidepressant anymore. I prophesy. You're not gonna walk around in a stupor anymore, not being able to feel anything. I find that in Jesus. I heard you. Here's what God just told me. Here's what God just told me. He is rewiring. My spirit just said, where? And he said, every medium. Now, that may not mean anything to you. It means something to me. That means in this room. Shout in this room. That means in Elkhart, Indiana. Shout in Elkhart, Indiana. Shout in Elkhart, I said shout it, not whisper it. Do you understand something happens when we agree? Do you understand that? One chases a thousand, two puts 10,000 to flight. Do you understand? If any two of us on earth agree touching anything that we ask, it shall be done for us by our Father in heaven. So glorify him together. This is what you call a praise service. Chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. Demons are screaming. Here's what he said to me. He said, in every venue, here, shout here, here. Now. now, Elkhart, Elkhart. Now. now, Elkhart, Elkhart. Now. now, Elkhart, Elkhart. Now. now, online, you're not even able to get out to church. Oh, I hear you. You're not even able to get out to church today. But the supernatural power of God, people are falling out in their homes right now. Stretch your hands for the camera anywhere. Lord God, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall in Pakistan, fall across Europe. Let it fall across Africa. Let it fall across America. Let it fall across Canada. Let it fall in Central America. Let it fall in South America. Now praise God for the anointing, breaking chains around the world right now. Hallelujah. 
in every venue. Come up here, Diana. Come up here, Diana. Don't ever ask if it's me, ever. Stand over there. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm under a very, 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 ooh, just worship him right now. Where's Lord, we worship your presence. We worship you for the power of the Holy Spirit. We worship you right now. Stomach and a bowel are being healed. Right now, right now, right now. If that's you, run down here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm hearing the word liver, pancreas, sugar diabetes. If that's you, get down here. If that's you, get to the altar at Elkhart. If that's you, get on your knees right where you are. Everybody, when I count to 10, I want you to shout for New World Harvest Church churches being birthed even today. Shout that this anointing is going around the world. Christian television networks cannot contain what God is about to do and doing in this place. All right, here's what it said to me. On Twitter, shout Twitter. If you don't have it, get it. What? If you don't have it, get it. Shout Facebook. If you don't have it, get it. Every platform, this is what it told me. You're looking at me funny. You've gone to sleep. Stir yourself up. Stir yourself up. Stir yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. People are being healed in the altar right now, especially at Elkhart. There's great faith in Elkhart right now. All right, here's what he said to me. On every platform. Now, Instagram. If you don't have it, get it. Now, I feel people right now, well, you know, I just don't want to get in there and be worldly. I just don't want to get in there and take up all my time. Well, you need to get sanctified. I don't want you to have it so you can gossip. I want you to have it to preach this gospel. Everybody with Twitter should have already tweeted something out of this service. God is moving by his spirit. He's given you all that to broadcast it. My good God in heaven. Here's what he said to me. Here's what he said to me. Shout, he told him. He said to me, on every platform, in just about 30 seconds, he is going to rewire brains why don't I have 3,000 people screaming? Come on, you gotta learn how to be World Harvest Church again. You gotta learn how to stand the anointing. Yes. Hey, Pastor. Good to see you. Here's what he said. I, the Lord God Almighty, have 
am going to rewire brains, nervous systems, and neurological systems and break the power of addiction by the power of my right arm, says God. Sugar addictions, caffeine addictions, sexual addictions, drug addictions. I heard you. Family relationships are going to be healed by the rewiring of somebody's mind. Shout while he rewires mind. Shout while he rewires nervous systems. I just heard him again. I just heard him again. He said, when I looked at these people, he said, if they will truly praise me and the power of my right arm to heal. Now, after he said this to me, I said to him, do you really mean all of them? And he said, sovereignly. If we praise Him, I mean with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, He is going to heal every person in these altars at Elkhart on every platform of these stomach and bowel conditions. I think it's time to praise Him that He already did it. Addicted, you better get to praise me. Now you hear this preacher. You hear me. You hear me? This preacher didn't tell you to stop anything. If you're doing something illegal, you better stop. But a whole lot of the addictions I'm talking about right now are not illegal. Come on now. Oh, it got quiet. Come on, Pastor. Help Shama us. Masa. Come on now. It got quiet. You look down your nose at somebody shooting heroin between their toes and you coughing down six Percocet a day. And you ain't even been re-examined for two years. This is killing our nation. Don't look at me funny. This is killing our nation destroying our families, wrecking our cities. America is addicted. I'm not looking down my nose at you. 99% of the cases, it wasn't even your fault. You just ended up there. Somebody told me at the emergency room, 
I was going in there to get a blood draw. And they told me, they said, Pastor, I said, I, I imagine you're flooded with flu. They said, we are. It's like the worst breakout in 50 years or something. They said, but pastor, you're a pastor. This, that's not the problem. I said, what's the problem? They said, people coming in here trying to score opioids and cough medicine with codeine. They're bringing their children in so they can get them a prescription and then they're taking it. They said people are stealing other people's medications and putting fake medications in their place and selling them. They are bringing truckloads, semi-tractor trailer truckloads into Kermit, West Virginia, right across the Tug River from where I'm from. The population is like 300 or something. And they prescribe like 6 million prescriptions for opioids in that community. Why is it so quiet? Is this something we don't care about? Is this something I, I, I just, I'm telling you, this is not in my notes. And those of you getting on bragging on social media about how many glasses of wine you're drinking to go to sleep, Right now, God's rewiring people's brains. That's what he's doing. He's rewiring their brains and their nervous systems and their neurological systems because those have been taken captive by chemicals and God's going to release that. Now you hear this pastor. I didn't tell you to stop taking anything. And I never will. Your doctor has you on something, you keep taking it. Listen to what I said. He's going to tell you, yes. you don't need it anymore. Hey! He's going to tell you. Yes. Your sleeping pills, your anti-anxiety medication. Your... Now you're getting real quiet on this preacher. Right here is a, a trainer of nurses. Am I telling every word the truth? Every word. Every word the truth. Right here, our precious elder's wife, Diana Yoder. First of all, I buried my first cousin who I grew up with like a brother rather than a cousin. four children, eight grandchildren, two great-grandchildren. I just buried him days ago. He didn't have to die. He didn't have to die. Our elder's wife, Diana Yoder, shout, you got to think right. You got to think right. And let me help you. This stigma of something wrong in the neurological system being any different than a broken arm is a lie. Your brain can get sick just like your body. Our elder's wife, Diana Yoder, has just been given a new position. Tell us what that position is. I'm the co-chair of the state of Ohio for the Addiction Policy Forum. See, God wants to move you to where you can, oh, I feel that. Yes. Throw your hands up, promotion is here. Yes. Oh, come on, yes. promotion, promotion is here for effectiveness oh. in the kingdom, for kingdom effectiveness. Yes. Promotion. Tell him, promote me, promote me because I'm living promote right. Me. Promote me because I'm thinking right. Promote 
promote me because I'm talking right. Okay, now. God is rewiring minds. Hmm? Autism spectrum disorders. Rewired. I mean, your brain is an amazing thing, Cameron. I, 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 I was studying it for a sermon I was going to preach this morning. Get a good shot of Cameron's eyes. Get right in on his eyes, okay? Now, Cameron, hold your eyes open till I say blink. Hold them open. Now, blink. Okay, did you see how fast his eyes blinked? Okay, ready? Blink. Blink. In one half that time, the signal raced through his neurons from his ears to his brain to his muscle at 1.1 millionth of a second. And do you know what God said? Before you get out half a blink, I'll be there. So call on the name of the Lord. I said go ahead and call on the name of the Lord. Now. Jimmy McFadden. Where are you, Jimmy? Come here, Jimmy. Jimmy has one of the most effective life groups and ministries in this whole wide ministry. Don't you leave me, Elkhart! Everybody at Elkhart shout, jump, dance, move, wave! Jimmy runs a life group on what night? Tuesday night. Tuesday night. On Tuesday night. Yes. Here at the ministry. Yes, sir. For men. Yes, sir. In recovery. Yes, sir. From addictions. Yes, sir. And the Holy Ghost fills that room. I'm telling you, I've been there three times. It is powerful. Tuesday night at seven. Seven. Yes, sir. Right here. Yes, in, sir. In Harvest Prep. Yes, sir. Upstairs. Yes, sir. So they can get here. Yes, sir. Call the church office. Yes, sir. And get in that meeting. Yes, sir. And you will be blessed. Yes, sir. Surrounded by men like Jimmy. Yes, sir. Who are going to pray for you, speak the word of God to you, teach you to minister the gospel. Yes, Amen. Tell Jimmy you love him. Wait. Watch this. So what's the position again? Uh, it's the co-chair for the entire state of Ohio out of Washington, D.C. It's the addiction recovery, or I'm sorry, the Ohio Addiction yes. Policy Forum. We're changing mm -hmm. laws. There's 174 people dying every day from addiction, from opiate addictions alone. That's not alcohol. 174 people a day. A day. 14 or 15 in the state of Ohio, and those are old records. 15 people a day are dying in our state. 15 people a day. But we're going to change that. That's right. That's right. We're going to change that. We're going to help these people. That's right. I said we're going to help these people. That's right. We need to find these families in crisis and bring them. That's right. Get a hold of them. And get, and get help for them. That's right. 22 million people across the United States have an addiction issue and only 10% are getting help. 22 million addicted, 2 million getting any help. Well, we're going to help that. I said, we're going to help that. Yeah. Are you healed? Yeah. Are you healed? Yeah. Do you believe God is rewiring brains? Yeah. Do you believe he's rewiring neurological? Yeah. And nervous systems? Yeah. Some of y'all, I got a word, need to get out of your environment. Get out. You say, I don't know a way out. Come to Valor Christian College. We'll get you out. 
Come to World Harvest Church. We'll get you out. Come to World Harvest Church, Elkhart. You know what happened the last two Thursday nights in Elkhart, Indiana? The last two Thursday nights, people have begun staggering into the church that don't even know what it is and saying, can I get saved? The last two Thursday nights. Do you understand something's happening? Give me my churches. Give me my churches. Give me my churches. Put the first one up there today. That's Maciel and Rebecca Sanchez. To, wait, today, today, they are launching a brand new church in a brand new City Harvest Network Church in Rio Grande, Texas. Next, Blake and Stephanie Booth, just outside LA, ends of California, City Harvest Network plant, church today. Yes. Next, Homero and Lydia Cano, Cano. They got it two different ways on here. Mont, Monte, What's up, Monte? <laughs> California, brand new City Harvest Network pastors launching a brand new church. Next. Jimmy and Debbie Mullador, Escondido, California, brand new City Harvest Network church launching this morning. Next. Joey and Shannon Telez, South Pasadena, California, launching brand new City Harvest Network Church, South Pasadena, California, this morning. That was pitiful. I know you've shouted a lot. Shout for Russian Harvest Church! Watch this now. Your difficulty is an indication of your calling. He's all right, I'm not going to touch him. Did you hear me? Your difficulty, your fire, is an indication. People say, well, why, why is God making me go through this fire? You know the three Hebrew boys? The three Hebrew men thrown in a fiery furnace? Got in the presence of God, four men showed up. First, one of the first most powerful revelations of Jesus before his second, his first advent in the manger. You know that? Jesus showed up in the fire. Did you ever wonder why? Why didn't he show up before the fire? Why didn't he like block the door? Don't tell me you've never thought that. You always want God to kill the king and quench the fire before you get in it. Look at your neighbor and say, he's not going to kill the king. Look at him and say, he's not going to quench the fire. Because there's a purpose to your problem. Your purpose is to walk out of that thing, not smelling like smoke, give glory to God. Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? The entire nation turned to God because three men refused to bow. It wasn't about them. It was about the nation. What you're going through, if you ever get the revelation, is not about 
you. It's about somebody watching you. And when you come out, they're coming out. Let me see. Where's Chad? What is it? Let me just see. Oh, yeah. Lorazepam. Yeah. In, in case you panic. Well, if you don't panic, I am anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, I make my request known unto God. And the very peace of my God, which surpasses understanding and comprehension, keeps, guards, and garrisons my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah Joshua Messiah, I believe that no one under the sound of my voice will ever experience a panic attack again. Go! Now, you give these back to whoever they are, and their doctor will tell them they don't need them. One more thing with you, and then I'm almost finished. How many members of your family have you lost to opioids? Nine. And, and many more still in the battle. How many in the battle? Probably four or five. Nine members of her family have died from opioid addiction. Is it any wonder that her problem is an indication of her calling? So is yours. So is yours. Everybody back to your seat quickly while we shout the praises of God that you're living right and thinking right. To God. You can be seated. I will be finished. Don't anyone move. In this weather, great. All you praying for snow, stop. Stop. Go to Pennsylvania and ski. Amen. Amen. Everybody that's living right shout that's good everybody that's gonna live right shout yeah. yeah you want power you want power you want your prayers answered Jonah said I can't afford not to live right I got too many prayers I need answered big ones everybody that's thinking right and going to think right. Just go ahead and check. <laughs> Everybody that's talking right and going to talk right, understanding the power of life and death is in your tongue. So everybody that's 
understanding Mark eleven twenty two to 24, have faith in God. For truly I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So everybody that's been talking right or gonna talk right, go ahead and shout. Now, everybody that is determined that you've been praising right. Yesterday was like the first day in my life in many, many years that God did not allow me my normal prayer time. I went there as I do twice a day and both times God said to me, I don't want you to do anything but praise me. And I'm like, yeah, but God, that's so easy. But he wanted my praise. And then this morning he said that to me. What gets in the head gets in the body. So everybody that has been praising right, I just feel this. Can we have a praise night next Sunday? Where's Lisa? Lisa, I don't like you. Did you get sick? No. Are you okay? Well, Elder G, we're praying for him because that flu hit him this morning. So I thought maybe, maybe it would hit you. I don't know how in this anointing. But I, I just want to request, I want a Sunday night praise and power night. Lay hands on everybody. I don't know what all would do. But I feel like we need to come together just for the purpose of praising him. Can we do it next Sunday night? Okay, next Sunday night. Get it in your, just get it in your phone. Get in your phone right now. Make a note, make a note of it. We're going to praise next Sunday night. Hallelujah. There's just something extra when you make an extra attempt to be here to praise him. So everybody that's going to, has been or going to praise right for the next seven days, mm, wave your hands. Clap your hands. Wave your hands, clap your hands, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Oh, man, I love going to church here. All right, one more thing. One more thing. You got to live right. You got to think right. You got to speak right. You got to praise right. And then you got to, you got to give right because it's offering time. Okay, did you see how everything just declined? Everybody lay everything off your lap just for a minute. And on three, get up and act like you're going to give right. Okay. Okay, I got money. I'm going to give you a two-minute lesson in giving right. It's called first fruits. First fruits is one of the three commanded offerings, not tithe, offerings of the year. God said, these three times you come before me. First fruits is a part of Pesach, Passover. First fruits. God said, bring the first of all thine increase. Okay, the first. Now what I've got here 
is I've got $100. So let's say you got paid $100 this week. It's a good round number. So then you sit down and you say, all right, I got a mortgage. Uh, that's going to take 30% or rent payment, rent insurance, utilities. None of that should ever equal more than 25% of your income. If it does, you're in trouble. I'm just helping you now. We're not shouting, but I'm helping you. Don't ever let your debt be more than 25% of your income, ever. So that's gone, because the bank's got that. And then, my wife's car, my car, my teenager's cars, their insurance and gas, and yeah. there's another 30. And then, we've gotta go to entertain ourselves in a movie. We got to eat out instead of cooking at home and making potato pancakes. Let's see now, we got a, oh yeah, that school loan. Okay. And then my cable bill. and my nails in golf. Okay, here's my tithe, $2. That's bringing the last of all your increase. God said bring the first of all your increase. So if you made $100, 10% of that 100 would be 10. So before you do anything else, this one belongs to God. It's his. It comes out before anything else comes out. Now I understand some of you didn't have this revelation. Some of you, if you gave the full 10% right now, really without owing people money you promised to pay them, you couldn't do it. My issue is I'd rather owe them than God. I'd rather make an explanation to them than I would to God. So 10% of every week's increase belongs to God. Isn't that simple? Aren't you glad it's not a code this deep? And Well, if you make this amount, but you can deduct this, and if you add that in, and then you've got your interest on your mortgage, and, you gotta, and then you got a business so you can write off your car, but you didn't buy the car in the business name, now you're in trouble, and you got... And you got to pay people to help you understand it. God is so much smarter than the federal government. Who's glad for that? Like he never stops running. That's all I'm saying. Like God never shuts down. Because he's always in agreement with himself. So, 10% at the front belongs to God. Period. That's just settled. Then God said three times a year, bring something above that to worship me with called a first fruit. Now for my family, sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's an entire year. This year, I think it was two and a half years income. You say, how can you do that? Well, you have to ask God. I can tell you this, it's an enormous sacrifice. Hallelujah. 
but I found out God's presence comes around a sacrifice. Look at the glory of God that's been in this house the last five weeks. Five weeks. So I'm going to ask you today to do nothing but be obedient to God's word in your tithe and your first fruits offering. Amen? Everybody grab an envelope. If you're giving a cash gift, if you're giving by check, you don't need an envelope. Just put a WHC or a WHCE. Or those of you watching online, just click right there on your screen. And we want you to participate. Your Bible says those who participate by reason of sacrifice are as one born in the house. That means you get the same anointing on your giving that those filling all these pews receive in their lives when you participate in sowing and reaping. And then put your first fruit seed with that. Amen? And let's glorify God with our giving today. Amen? Text to give is on the screen. Text the amount, dollar sign amount, to WHC 45777 and just follow the instructions that are given to you. About 40% of our giving is now done on text to give. We save a lot of money that way too because we don't have to do a bunch of receipts and all that kind of stuff. You'll get a receipt before you leave the room. And so it's so much easier. And, and it's so, Father, I just speak life and healing to my friend Jerry Deal right now that every ounce of anointing that has been in this room permeates every part of his being. In Jesus' name, I rebuke pain. And I rebuke its source in the glorious name of the Lord Jesus. Take pain from every person. Isaiah 53 says, you bore all of our sicknesses and diseases and you carried all of our pain. And we believe you. We believe you to heal Amanda's father. And give him the heart that he needs. In Jesus' name. Thank you for healing Elizabeth Wells, Lord. And Kim, thank you, Lord, for healing Pastor Tim. Thank you that your healing virtue is among us. We glorify you for it. Find us obedient, knowing that your miracle is manifested by what you do when we obey. Amen? Amen. I want you to give us unto the Lord. Uh, ushers are going to go ahead and wait on you. I shared with you that we are launching five brand new churches today. Please pray for those churches. If you'd like to pray for all of our churches, you can go to, I always get this website wrong, cityharvest.network, cityharvest.network. Miss Joni is about to launch a brand new blog again. We are very excited about it online. Ashton Blair is everywhere. I sound like green eggs and ham, don't I? Ashton Blair is everywhere. Come up here and stand with your daddy. Everybody say hello to Ashton. Thank you for praying for my precious mother today. I spent all day yesterday with her up to about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and uh, God is a wonder. Amen. She has, is in no pain whatsoever, and so we thank God for that. Amen. Keep, keep her in your prayers. But Ashton is now, you have a brand new YouTube, is that right? Is it up? So they can watch you on YouTube. So get there, right? Get, how they do it? You just go to YouTube, search Ashton Parsley, and I've got a channel on there now. You got your own channel. I like that. Thank you, Chad. And so you had something very, very, very exciting happen last week. And I want you to tell us just a little bit about it before we see this. Um, so I was... She didn't want to do this reason. She's looking at me. She said, you have to do it. And I don't want to do it because I've been doing everything and you look pretty. Thank you. Um, 
I was contacted by a media group and asked uh, to represent the faith-based audience as a member of the press at a press junket in Los Angeles, California. Thank you. <laughs> for, um, for a brand new motion picture that just came out on Friday called Forever My Girl. And it's produced by two great men of faith, Mickey Liddell and Pete Shileman. And uh, they've, they've produced films like Risen, Megan Levy, Jackie, The Zookeeper's Wife, The Hillsong Movie. Um, and so I had the opportunity to interview them and also interview the stars of the film, uh, Jessica Roth and Alex Rowe. And uh, so it was a great, great opportunity. Look, I want, to, I want to say this. Look, these are the movies these people have been involved in. Uh, La La Land, Ant-Man, Transparent, Flags of Our Fathers, Bone Collector, uh, Risen, Megan Levy, Disconnect, The Twilight Saga, uh, The Hunger Games, Ocean's Eleven. That's the kind of folks Remember what I told you about Miss Diana, right? Now this one, having influence in that arena, and we're so happy. So what are we gonna see? You're gonna see just a 60 second clip of my interview with the producers. Okay, but wait, and give me my phone. Give me my phone. I got finished early today, hang on. Watch this, you're gonna love this. If you don't have Marco Polo, get it. Okay, wait now. Hey buddy, what are you doing to us men in the church, Pastor? You do not put on a public forum that you're gonna watch a chick flick, man. Because now we're all stuck. Now I gotta go and watch a chick flick. <laughs> That's Pastor Ramirez. <laughs> He said, what are you doing promoting this thing, man? Now everybody got to go take their wife to watch a chick flick. And he took her and he said, I cried my eyes out. Well, and I'm like, you're such a girl. Because you put on social media, yeah. you had planned to take Miss Joni yeah, but Friday see, night for a little date but night. See, that's what I told, uh, that's what I told Pastor Ramirez. <laughs> I said, bro, I got to tell you, you got to learn to work the thing. So, so what I did is I bought 60 girls at Valor Christian College their ticket, and I sent Miss Joni with Ashton and all that estrogen to go watch that movie. Austin says I'm not allowed to go because I cry at movies anyway. Well, you would have cried your eyes out in this one too. Yeah, it is an incredible movie. Uh, and so, what are we gonna do? We're gonna see a little of your Just a, a clip of my interview with the producers and then the full interviews with both producers and then the stars of the film is on my YouTube so channel. So you interviewed the stars too? I did. And that's on your YouTube? Yes. These are the producers we're gonna yes. see. And you interviewed them? I did. Wonderful, let's see it just for a second. <laughs> what do you hope audiences take away from the film? So for me, you know, go in there, have fun with your family and loved ones, and then walk out thinking about that person that maybe you can forgive and move on. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, a great thing for all families to go see. I, I could see this, you know, like the movie Wonder, like I, my entire family, everybody went, you know, yeah. from all ages, whatever. This has that feeling. You could take 30 people in your family, and I think they all would love it, and they all would get that message out of it. That let's, let's try to be our best selves and, and get along in our family. Well, I'm, I'm sold. I'm taking my family. Uh, so. Good. That's your car. Yeah. What's wrong with it? I don't do convertibles. They're too dangerous. Come on, it'll be fun, no? Do you know the stats on surviving an accident in a convertible? No. No, I do not. Well, they are low, Liam. Staggeringly low. <laughs> so it's forever my girl. Yeah, it's, it's a film about, there's a love story at the core, but yeah. it's about forgiveness and second chances and redemption and family, so. Wonderful. Yeah. Great family night, huh? That's right. Great life group opportunity. Yes. Amen. Yes. Valor had a great time, didn't we, ladies? Did you have a good time, Valor? The ladies? We took over. We, we were loud and obnoxious, and I didn't mind. <laughs> 
That's awesome. Let's all stand together. Hallelujah. Wednesday nights, I'm telling you, fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. Don't miss it. Next steps one. If you want to know more about how you can be a part of this great fellowship we call World Harvest Church, we would love to give you lunch, sit and talk with you a little bit. Whole thing will take about 45 minutes and we'd like to get you busy with the kingdom, making tons of new friends. And so that will be actually in Murphy, right this way. Uh, this time. So next steps one, everybody, everybody, everybody that's not a part of the dream team, stop in there today. You don't have to be registered. Just come on. Father, you're a wonder. Thank you for the gift of your son, unspeakable gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. I heard. I I'd like some of our leaders to make their way to the altar right now. We don't ever want you to leave here unsure of your eternal destiny. If you don't know that you're as sure for heaven as if you were already there, you can be before you leave the building today. If you just, when I dismiss, make your way to the altar, we'll pray with you here. You'll meet some of the greatest friends you've ever had. If you'd like to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you can do that today. Or if you just like more information about World Harvest Church, you can do that right here today at the altar. We'd love to greet you. Otherwise, we'll see you all Wednesday night.